ليكن يومك للشعب ودادا ليكن حبك للأرض مدا للأرض مدا من حفظ عشر آيات من أول سورة الكهف رسم من الدجال that whoever memorizes the, the first ten verses of Surah Al-Kahf is going to be saved from the torment of Antichrist. A'uzu billahi minash shaitan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. Allahumma anfa'na bima allamtana, wa'alimna ma yanfa'na wa zidna ilma. A sick refuge from Allah against shaitan, the accursed one in the name of Allah, the most gracious, the most merciful. Praise be to Allah, the Lord of the worlds, the most gracious, the most merciful. The master of the day of judgment, the day alone we worship and for the day we seek for help. Guide us to the right path. The path of those, of those who have shown thy favor, and not of those who have shown thy anger and have gone astray. Amen. In this series, we will be talking about the stories from Surah Al-Kahf with its lessons. Surah Al-Kahf it is one of the earliest revelations in the Quran to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Surah Al-Kahf was revealed to him in Mecca and also in Medina. 107 verses was revealed to him in Mecca why three verses was revealed to him in Medina? Surah Al-Kahf consists of 110 verses. So the three verses that was revealed to him in Medina are verse 28, verse 83, and verse 101 out of the 110 verses of Surah Al-Kahf. So in this series, we will be talking about the benefit of Surah Al-Kahf. We will be talking about the essence of reciting it and how the importance and also how the story is inside the story is linked to the torment of the Antichrist, of the Jal. Now, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned in one of his Hadith that Man Hafiza Ashar Ayatim min Awal Surah Al Kahf Usima min Ad Dajjal. That whoever memorizes the, the first 10 verses of Surah Al Kahf is going to be saved from the torment of Antichrist. Other hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also says that Man Qara'a Surah Al Kahf fi Yawm al Jum'ah Adaw lahu min Nurima Baina Jum'atayn. That whoever recites Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday, there is going to be light on him till the next Friday. So, as Muslims, it is important for us to be reciting our Surah Al-Kahf every Friday. You can start from uh, after Surah Al-Maghrib, uh, after the Adhan of Surah Al-Maghrib, after uh, observing your prayers of Surah Al-Maghrib, on Thursday, then Friday has, uh, you know, started. Then you can finish your recitation after Asr, inshallah, on, on Friday. Just, just make sure you finish the uh, recitation of the whole Surah Al-Kahf on a Friday. Regardless if you recite it straight or you recite it in parts till you finish. May Allah make it easy for all of us. Now, Surah Al-Kahf, is so important because, as I have said, that memorizing the first time verse of Surah Al-Kahf will save us from the torment of Antichrist. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there is one prayer I used to say, that, Allahumma inni a'uzu bika min fitness il masih dajjal That's, oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the torment of masih dajjal the torment of Antichrist. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, there is no fitna, there is no problem, there is no atrocity on the surface of the earth that will be as greater as the torment of Antichrist. Now, 
The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, while he was in Mecca, the Qurayshis, they torment him a lot. And, as we all know, the people of the book, the Jewish people, the Jewish people and also the Christians, they have so much stories packed in their history books. There is a man called Nadir ibn Haris. Another one is called Uqba ibn Abu Muhit. They call onto the Qurayshis, the pagan of Mecca. That's, that guy is disturbing you. Don't worry, come. We are going to tell you something. You are going to ask him some questions and it is going to destabilize him. He won't trouble you again. They said, you are meant to ask him three questions. The first two questions, if he gives you the detailed answer, and the third one, if he refuses to give you the detailed answer, any answer on it, then he's a true prophet. The third question, if he gives you a direct answer on it, then he's not a true prophet, he's a fake prophet. Now, the first question says that, who are the people of the cave? Who are the people of the cave? The story of the people of the cave is in the history books of the people of the book. Then, ask him about the man who traveled and ruled from east to west, which is Zulkarnain. Ask him. This is also written in the history books of the people of the book. Then the third one, ask him about the soul, ruh. If he answers you on the third one, then he's a fake prophet. The two, we are very, very sure that you are going to destabilize him. The third question, the answer says, Allah mentioned to the Prophet that, وَيَسْأَلُونَكْ عَنِ الرُّوحِ and they ask you about the soul. Tell to them, كُلُّ الرُّوحُ مِنْ أَمْرِ رَبِّنَا وَمَا أُوْتِيتُ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا That the knowledge of the soul belongs to who? Belongs to Allah. And it's only what Allah revealed to me that I know. Whatever I know is what? Is little. Then, the second question and the first question. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them to come back the next day. The next day being Thursday, he was expecting that Jibreel is going to come to reveal to him. The second day came, Jibreel refuses to come. The third day came, the first person was expecting Jibreel, he did not come. The fourth day came, no revelation. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he doesn't know anything, only what Allah reveals to him. So he was expecting that, okay, they came to ask me a question, yes, Jubil is coming to yeah, put everything into order. The first day, second day, third day, fourth day, fifth day, everybody in Mecca said, you see, they've asked him a question they cannot answer. This became a kind of shame. Three of Islam. The first of Islam was full of anxiety. What's going on? Jubil did not come the seventh day, sixth day, Six day, seventh day, eighth day, nine day, until after 15 days. Where everybody was like, he doesn't know anything. Then Jibreel now came. As he came, he came to reveal everything to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But Allah was teaching the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam a lesson. What lesson is that? He asked them to come back the next day without saying, by the grace and might and power of Allah, Allah reveals to us in Surah Al-Kaf that Allah. Do not say that you are going to do so and so tomorrow. Except you say that by the might and power of the Almighty Allah. So Allah was using that to correct the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in that incident. Now, they were gathered up. Okay, what is going to happen? Then Allah brought forth the picture exactly as it happened, as if he's watching a movie of everything they asked him about the Ashab al-Kaf 
and also the man who ruled from east to west and traveled from east, from east to west. Now, in Surah Al-Kaf, we are going to be talking about the Ashab Al-Kaf, as I've mentioned. We'll be talking about the story of Zulkarnain. The Ashab Al-Kaf is about the trial of faith. The story of Zulkarnain is about the trial of power. Inside Surah Al-Kaf as well, we have the story of Khidr and Musa. Khidr and Musa is the power, is the, is the test, trials of knowledge. Now, uh, we are going to start from the Ashab Al-Kaf and also we are going to talk about the trial of wealth as well. The story of the Maui Two Gardens. Inshallah, in the coming episodes, we'll be narrating it as they come, inshallah. Allah ma'in al haqqa haqqa wa zukna tiba wa ayin al baatila baatila wa zukna shtinaba. Subhanakallah wa hamdik, ashara la ilaha ila anta stakfu kratula. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank <laughs> you.